This is the second section of chapter six on integration techniques. And here we're going to be looking at finding the arc length of a graph or some sort of curve. OK, well, the different types of graphs we can get can come from a Cartesian equation, a parametric equation or a polar equation. And when we're working at the arc, arc length, imagine some sort of graph like this. Between two limits here, I've given an example of a Cartesian curve where I've got X and Y. Between these limits of A and B, X, A and X, B, I can find the length of this part of the graph here, what we call the arc length. And we're going to be using the letter S when we talk about finding the arc length. So let's first of all start with let's say uh, a Cartesian equation given in this form y equals a function of x. Well to find the arc length we apply this formula here so these are going to be our two x, x limits here. We um, find a derivative of this so we differentiate it, we square it, we do 1 plus the derivative squared, we square root it and then we integrate it. That will give us the arc length. This is all based on Pythagoras by the way. If I have a Cartesian equation, but it's x equals a function of y, then you can see basically everywhere I've got x here gets swapped with a y. So the limits are going to be y limits, so they'd be along this axis here. And we would differentiate this, that would give us dx dy, we square it, do 1 plus that, and then we integrate it with respect to y. Now this isn't in the formula book. Every other formula that I've got here is in the formula book so you don't need to memorize them you can just go to your formula book and find them this one isn't but we can easily derive it from this so if i do get a question where it's x as a function of y look this up in the formula book and just say right well, these x's need to be y's and this will just become dx dy so really once we know this we can easily derive this so that's cartesian equations Notice on both of them, we've got S equals S equals, which is the arc length. Right, let's move now to parametric equations. So X is a function of T, Y is a function of T. Now, how do we find the arc length here? Well, first of all, the limits are going to be the T values. They're going to be the limits. And then what we do is we differentiate each part of the parametric equation. So DX, DT and DY, TT. We square them, add them together, find the square root and integrate with respect to t. So you can see these are all very similar, aren't they, in, in layout. So where this has got one plus uh, dy dx all squared, this has got dx dt all squared plus dy dt all squared. Okay, so this will give us the arc length for a parametric equation. And last of all, a polar equation where r equals a function of theta, um, then if we want to find the arc length for um, a polar graph first of all we'll need to know the limits and these limits here of alpha and beta are basically the angles measured from the initial line alpha and beta and here this is slightly different so what we do whatever our function is we square it then we differentiate this so we get dr d theta and we square it add those together square root it integrate with respect to um, theta and then we get our arc length so for all of these they're pretty much the same steps step number one is always going to be some sort of step where you differentiate step number two is going to be some sort of step where you square what you've differentiated step number three is going to involve some sort of addition uh, with the things that you've differentiated or maybe in addition with one or r squared uh, then we square root and then the last step is going to be to integrate with our limits so integrate with limits so same types of things that we do regardless of whether it's cartesian parametric or polar Right, so in this example here, we want to find the length of this arc on this curve, which is here. So we're trying to find the arc length. So the first thing to note, 
that this is a Cartesian equation uh, where we've got y as a function of x. So if I were doing this, the first thing I would write down from the formula book is which of the formulae I'm going to use. So the arc length, my limits are going to be x limits like this, and it's going to be the square root of 1 plus dy dx, all squared, and then differentiate this with respect to x. So let's just substitute the values in. So my x limits are going to be 8 and 15. Um, and then it's going to be the square root of 1 plus. Now I need to work out what dy dx is. So let's do this over here. So dy dx will equal, um, let's see, so it'll be 3 over 2 times by 2 thirds x to the power a half. That just becomes x to the power half, or square root x, if you like. So uh, dy dx is x to the power half, or square root x. And that needs to be squared. That makes it nice and easy. So 8 and 15. And I will have um, this, I need to integrate 1 plus x dx. So I just need to change this here. That should have been dx. Right. Um, now, this is the same as 1 plus x to the power half. So I can integrate that by using the reverse chain rule. So let's do that. Use the reverse chain rule. So that means that I um, integrate the outside. So if I integrate the outside, that means adding one to this power and dividing by the new power. So the new power is going to be three over two. If I divide by that new power, um, dividing by three over two is the same as multiplying by two thirds. When I multiply by the inside differentiated, sorry, divide by the inside differentiated. So I divide this by one. So that's not going to change. And my limits are eight and 15. So I'm now ready to substitute those in. So S equals, um, so like this, two thirds times by one plus the upper limit, 15 to the power of three over two. And then minus two thirds, one plus the lower limit, eight to the power of three over two. So let's use our calculators to work that out and get the arc length. So I'll type that all in and it gives me an exact answer of 74 over 3 as the arc length. And I'll leave it as that exact value there. OK, so here we've got a parametric equation. So the first thing that I'm going to do is to write down the formula that I need from the formula book to find the arc length of a parametric equation. So I just need to remember that my limits are in terms of t and this time I differentiate both parts of the parametric equation and square them, find the sum of them and then I integrate with respect to t. So let's do that. But actually part, it's split up into two parts. It says show that this is equal to 16 cos squared t over two. In other words, with in part A, we're just working out what this bit is, and then we'll use that for part B. So part A is, what's this? Okay, so let's do that. So we'll need to differentiate both parts. So x equals three plus two cos t. So we need to find dx dt. And that will be um, minus two sine t. Then we'll need to find dy dt. So y is two t plus two sine t. So dy dt 
is equal to 2 um, plus 2 cos t. So now we'll need to square them and add them. So we'll do that. So um, that's going to be minus 2 sine t all squared plus um, 2 plus 2 cos t all squared. So we'll square them and see what we get. So we'll get 4 sine squared t from the first bracket. Then from the second bracket, we'll get 4 plus 4 cos t plus another 4 cos t. So plus 8 cos t plus 4 cos squared t. Now we'll have a quick look at what we're trying to get to, which is this here. OK, 16 cos squared t over 2, so I'll just highlight that. So I can see if I go back to this, um, sine squared plus cos squared is 1. So then um, basically this term here and this term here together make 4, don't they? Because you're going to have 4 cos uh, squared plus sine squared. So you've got 4 plus another 4 there. So you've got 8. So I have 8 plus 8 cos t now if we look here it's got cos squared in and it's got t over 2 half the angle of this now how can we get from this angle to half the angle well, we can use the double angle formula if we use it sort of um, without the double angle just with the angle it becomes what we call like a half angle I'll show you what I mean so if I've got cos um, let's use t, cos 2t, uh, which I know is equivalent to 2 cos squared t um, minus 1. Then instead of writing cos 2t, if I just wrote cos t and just half the size of the angle, then I'll have 2 cos squared t over 2 because this angle here is always half of this angle. So this is why we can call it like a half angle minus 1 and we can use this to make the substitution so we'll replace this cos t with this so next step is going to look like this 8 plus 8 lots of not cos t but what I've got written on the right hand side there cos squared t over 2 minus 1 when I uh, multiply this out, I'll get 8 there and I'll get negative 8 there. So that'll be gone. And then I multiply this out, I'll be left with 16 cos squared t over 2 as required. OK, let's now have a look at part B. Now, part B, it says find the exact length of this curve between these points. So these are going to be our limits, T A and T B. Now we've worked out what this is. So now the arc length S between the limits of pi over three and pi is going to be the square root of the derivative squared added together, which we've already worked out, which is 16 cos squared t over two, which we integrate with respect to t. Right, so if we square root this, just just becomes 4 cos t over 2. So we'll write that over here. So s equals um, this integration. So 4 cos t over 2 dt. So we can integrate this here using the reverse chain rule because the inside, what's inside the bracket is linear. So my arc length is going to be right. So if I um, integrate the outside, I will get sine here. Then if I divide by the inside differentiated, so I divide by a half, um, which is the same as times in by two. So I will get eight sine t over two. Remember the inside of the bracket doesn't change between these limits of pi and pi over 3. So basically now I just substitute 8 sine um, if when t is pi that'll become sine pi over 
2 minus 8 sine, then it's going to be pi over 3 divided by 2, which is pi over 6. So we'll stick that in our calculator. And from the calculator, we get an exact answer of 4 for this arc length. OK, so we can see on this question, it's about finding the arc length of a polar curve. So the first thing that we do is to write down from the formula book how we find the arc length from a polar curve. And it's going to be this. So remember, our limits are the angle in radians from the half line and then or the initial line. So that'll be r squared plus dr d theta all squared and all integrated with respect to theta. So in the question here, I can see r equals 5 e to the 2 theta. So we need to differentiate that and find dr d theta. So that would be 10 e to the 2 theta. And we'll work out r squared because we'll need that as well. And that will be uh, 25 e to the 4 theta. So remember, if you times this by itself, you're going to get 5 times 5 e to the 2 theta times e to the 2 theta. So you add the powers, giving you e to the 4 theta. So our arc length is going to be the integral between the limits. And we have the limits here. Uh, theta equals 0 and pi over 2. So 0 pi over 2. And it's the square root of r squared, 25e to the 4 theta, plus 10e to the 2 theta. So that's our um, dr d theta, all integrated with respect to theta. Now our dr d theta needs to be squared, so I'll just put that in brackets, almost left that out. Um, so s will equal, so let's square it and see if we can um, simplify what we've got there. So that would be the square root of 25e to the 4 theta plus, if we square that, we'll get 100e also to the 4 theta. That's handy. So now they can go together. That will give me 125e to the 4 theta. It's going to be the square root of that. 125e to the 4 theta between pi over 2 and 0. OK, so now I will square root it. Um, and it will give me... Uh, root 125, I could work out what that is, times by e to the 2 theta, when you square root, you half the power. So now I'm ready to do my integration. And this I will do by the reverse chain rule, because the inside there is linear. So if I uh, integrate the outside, e will stay as e. Then I divide by this differentiated. So all I need to do is it's going to look exactly like that, but divided by 2. So let's root, write root 125 over 2 e to the 2 theta. And now we can substitute in our limits. So we'll get arc length is equal to root 125 over 2 e to the power 2 times pi over 2, so it's just going to be e to the pi, um, minus root 125 over 2 times by e to the power 2 times 0, so it's e to the power 0, which is just going to be 1. Now, if we do this on a calculator, we're not going to get an exact answer. You get something like 123.77. And really we want to keep the answer exact. I suppose if we gave an answer to three significant figures, so 124, for example, we get the mark. Um, but it's basically going to be root 1, 2, 5 over 2. And we get that from both brackets. 
then from the first bracket it's going to be uh, e to the pi and we're going to take off one of those root one two fives over two so there we go there's the exact arc length okay so this question here you want to find the exact length of the arc on this parabola here from the origin to this point here so i'm just going to draw a sketch not really needed but um, maybe we can just see what it looks like so parabola is going to look like this something like that and our limits are between zero and four because that y coordinate is eight so we want to find out this length here so first thing is our formula for arc length our limits are going to be x limits and it's going to be the square root of one plus dy dx all squared and then differentiate with respect to x okay so i have y equals half x squared which means that dy dx nice and simple is going to be x and i have my limits so the question becomes this between zero and four we need to integrate one plus uh, x squared dy dx squared dx now to differentiate this although it may look quite simple we need to use a core two method and that is substitution and it's going to be a hyperbolic substitution so i'll just put a link something should appear up in the corner um, that you can use and it's exactly the same example as this but without limits so the substitution that we're going to make is that we'll let x equal to shine u so we will need uh, dx du dx du which will be cosh u then we can rearrange that and say that dx is equal to cosh u du so we can substitute that we need to do the same with our limits because we need to substitute the limits from x limits to u limits so our limits are 0 and 4 now how are we going to change those well we can use this substitution if we do the arc shine to both sides we'll have arc shine x equals u so basically the arc shine of these values gives us the u values so the first one's going to be the arc shine of zero and if you do that on your calculator you will get zero and the second one is the arc shine of um four but you won't get exact value so we'll use that exact value there so let's now do all of the substitutions so the limits are going to be zero and arc shine four and we are going to replace the x squared with shine squared u and then we'll have the dx replaced with cos u du right now we'll use a, a substitution because uh, cos squared u minus shine squared u is one so that means that i can replace this with cos squared u minus one so in fact this bit under the square root just becomes the square root of cosh squared so let's just write that down before we square root it so zero arc shine four and what we're going to have here is the square root of cosh squared and then cosh u du well obviously what's going to happen here that will just become cosh u and then we've got cosh u times by cosh u and then it simplifies down to give us just cos squared u du okay now this isn't in the form that we can integrate so um, we're going to use another identity here to be able to um, integrate that 
and it's a bit like the double angle that we have for cos. Uh, cos. So uh, cosh 2u is equal to 2 cosh squared u minus 1. That means that this can be substituted for half uh, cosh 2u plus 1. And we'll do that substitution now. So next step, we'll have this s equals between 0 and arc shine for um, half. So we'll stick the half here. Cosh 2u plus 1. Now, this is now something we can integrate. Cosh 2u, when it's integrated, is going to become half shine 2u. Half shine 2u. Okay, so this is what it gets, becomes after integration. Now, since we want exact values, we really want the exponential definitions of shine and um, arc shine. Okay, so here they are. So uh, shine to you can be written like this in exponential form. An arc shine for uh, we can find in the formula, but in, for, in fact, arc shine x over a, in which case here 4 would be like uh, 4 over 1, so x would be 4, a would be 1. From the formula book is log x, so my x is 4, plus the square root of x squared plus a squared, so 4 squared plus 1 squared. So arc shine 4 is exactly log 4 plus root 17. So these are what we're going to use these exact values here. So when I substitute in my upper limit of arc shine 4, I'll use that. And for shine 2u, I'm going to use this. OK, so what you'll see here is the result of that substitution. So I'll just go for it. So I've got half, half, half shine 2u. So half, this is shine 2u here. So e to the 2u. So it's going to be 2 times this, 2 times that. So I'll have a 2 here, 2, but I've moved a 2 to the power so that these can, will cancel out in a moment. And I've done the same here. This would be minus e to the power negative 2u, and u is this. So I've moved it to a power there. So these cancel out. And then um, plus u, so plus this. Now, when I substitute in the second limit of zero, since uh, uh, shine zero is zero and u is going to be zero, I'm effectively taking away zero. So this basically makes the, my solution. OK, so this is what it will become once it's simplified. So as I said, the e's and the logs cancel out and we've got half, half, half again. So that's one eighth and then half of this second bit here. Right, so now we can uh, work out what it gives us. So it's going to be 1 eighth of, now when we work this out on our calculator, we'll get 16 root 7. So 1 eighth of 16 7, 17, sorry, plus half log 4 plus root 17. And then that will give us half log 4 plus root 17 and then um, this part here 1 8th of that will give us 2 root 17 okay so this represents the exact solution so even though the integral itself and the first part of the question was very straightforward the actual integration required a core two technique, so just be aware of that. And it required a couple of substitutions along the way. So this required quite a bit of knowledge of this core two hyperbolic functions chapter. You should now be able to do exercise 6b on pages 202 to 205. So just a quick recap. We've got our different types of graph. So our equations, Cartesian, parametric and polar, depending on, on the type that we have, um, will tell us which type of 
integral we're going to use to find the arc length and this is a diagram showing basically what we're trying to work out this one here isn't in the formula book but it, we can easily get it from this by swapping the x's and y's around so basically the steps are differentiate square use addition they will use addition square root then integrate with limits now just be aware that this integration with limits could require you to use quite a tricky method so make sure that you're aware of um, all of the integration methods from pure to and from core to as well with those hyperbolic functions